Let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, what did you think? Um, so, I liked it. I okay. definitely liked it. I think I. I'm I, hearing great things about it. I, it. It's cool. I think I preferred Dawn a little more than this one. Really? Um, but that's not a slam on this movie. I just mm-hmm. think if you're gonna if you're gonna stand up and watch this this trilogy, uh, Rise, Dawn, and War. Mm-hmm. Um, and you had to pick a, a favorite, I would have picked the middle one. Just okay. me personally. But mm-hmm. but overall, You it's... would have picked Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right, exactly. I'd pick Empire Strikes Back. So overall, though, it's it's really cool and... It's a solid movie. It's a solid movie. And if Andy Serkis doesn't get a nomination, mm-hmm. I, then I don't know. Because there are some one-on-one acting scenes. And, and as we've researched, so in the first one, he only spoke a couple words of English. Right. In the second one, he his was kind of... This is the character Caesar. Yeah, Caesar mm-hmm, mm-hmm. kind of had broken English, but but dec- okay. This one he's speaking almost fully like so you're seeing his progression mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you're also seeing you know it's we've talked about this before the prequel thing is a hard thing to pull off. Right. Cuz we know what we, we know, know where the, we're headed. We know the Charlton Heston one like we know right. where we're going. So um so you could really like paint yourself into a corner, but these movies don't. And I liked it, and it really shows how humans are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> the virus. The, the virus. Yeah. They are the virus. How and did Woody Harrelson do? I loved him as as, as crazy, you know, Colonel Kurtz, Woody Harrelson. Yeah, right. I going thought, up the river. Yeah, he, he went up the river. So good. He went up the river as a yeah. wing nut, and and his. You know, we'll do a spoiler rep on this, so we'll get into more more specific details. But just in the broad strokes of it, there's there's a scene, a couple scenes between Caesar and Woody Harrelson's character that are really amazing, um, and so I really liked it. So, Jason, what did you think of this film? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. See, I I feel uh, un, like uh, like you, these these two here are both like film <laughs> <laughs> aficionados, and they've trained and background, they've done movies. Trained. I'm just a hand to hand film <laughs> combat. We've <laughs> I'm just a guy who watches movies, and I loved it. I'm an easy mark. But I, I think I, I also would have chosen the second one, like, between the three. Uh-huh. But this one wrap buttons everything up for, in a really satisfying way mm-hmm. <clears throat> to me. Did it feel like the end of a trilogy, like these three movies were all connected and this was, like, the, the third final one? Oh, uh, for sure. They absolutely mm-hmm. did a great job of... of it's a three act play. I mean, yeah. like mm-hmm. in, in terms of, of these three films and the progression of these films, the progression of the characters, the um, regression of humans mm-hmm. and the uh, evolution and the of evolution the of the apes. apes. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, Steve Zahn plays this basically zoo um, a chimpanzee that they come in contact with who has figured out how to speak a little bit. And you're seeing how the apes are evolving. Mm-hmm. There's some great Easter eggs in there that I won't spoil for you if you're a fan of the original that mm-hmm. are that are just like, oh. Yeah. And we could I think we'll get into it in the spoiler in terms you're of gonna see Taylor's loincloth. Well, there's some <laughs> stuff in there and and we we tend to to nitpick more in the there's some timeline issues I just okay. I want to bring up in the in the spoiler app. But that's just me being a, a Planet of the Apes nerd that's that's nitpicking it. So right. Overall, though, I think they did a great job. Have you seen all three of these films? Yeah. 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 And what did you and think? And I love them. And I'm not into all of this stuff. Like, I know you guys are, you, you review all of the superhero movies and all of this. And as a guy watching a movie, I just wish the two superheroes would just kill all each other off and be done with it. Like, <laughs> it just goes on and on and on and on. So that's, I'm coming from that kind of simpleton you know, place, and I haven't even seen the Charlton Heston movie. Oh wow! So I don't, I didn't know where it was going. Well, that's a great perspective, though. Mm-hmm. So, so someone who knows very little about the Charlton Heston yeah, Planet of the Apes, nothing. Nothing. How did this? How did these? I three loved movies, it. Right. And the, and I, I really loved the first one, and then committed in advance to see the second. And when this one started, and it went right into the war, I thought it was like when the Matrix Two came out, and it was like a f- three-hour chase scene. I'm like, oh, there's no more pixie ducks. 
pixie dust left for you, left for you guys. Right. Uh, but this one started in that way, and then it got real slow and tender, and it was almost like Saving Private Ryan, where they're showing the, the stupidity of war in slow mo mm -hmm. kind of thing. But it wasn't violence porn, which is so many movies, uh, like the Leonardo DiCaprio one where he's in Alaska with the bear, mm -hmm. where it's like if that were sex, it would be banned. But because it's just juices flowing and like Tarantino kind of like, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't go there. So I was deliverance. Really, that the movie you're Deliverance, about? yeah. <laughs> well, no, wait. What the was Revenant. the one? The, the Revenant. Revenant. The Revenant. The Revenant. The Revenant. Yeah. The Reverence. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't The Revenant just a remake of yes. Deliverance? Yeah. Isn't yeah. that it's what it was? Much. Yeah. Just, with a bear. Yeah, with, with a, a bear. bear. That bear's got a pretty mouth. <laughs> and then they start fighting. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, that's a, that's, a great, that's a great point, too. And I, 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 the, it wasn't just violence and big budget action just to, for the sake of it. It was really, these movies... There's some commentary. Man, there's some as, huge... As there was commentary in the Charlton House. Well, that's the, movie. the thing that's so great about them is they haven't... It's like the complaint we have with the Star Trek films is they've abandoned the social commentary of the original Star Trek. Well, they've Trek. abandoned Star Trek. Yeah, they've the completely Star Trek abandoned films. Star Trek, yeah. and mm -hmm. they're just sort of making... You know, like you said, pretty just, people fight in space. Exactly, yeah. sci-fi. Is, is that what Star Wars is, or is, is that still on track? With... Star Wars, I think, is still on track. Yeah. I think so too. Star yeah. Trek is 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 off the rails. It's off the rails. We always say it's a fun. It, they're fine action movies, but they're not good Star Trek movies. Yeah. They don't mm -hmm. have this sort of ethical dilemma. And man, these films, in some ways, have mm -hmm. taken the ethical dilemmas and the social commentary of the original films and done them even. Yeah. Better in my opinion. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a. This isn't a spoiler alert, but there is one moment where it slows it down, and that guy. What's the one who played Caesar? That Andy Circus. Oh my mm -hmm. God, he's so good. He's, That's crazy good. He, but there was a moment where he's talking to the the ape that had gone to the human side and was helping him. You know, I'm, he said, "I'm going to help myself, and, or I'm going to save myself." And the line back was, uh, "Is there anything left of you to save?" I'm like, mm -hmm. oh man, just right in the middle, pow. Mm -hmm. It's such, that's such powerful stuff because there are, and you see it in the trailer, there's like a big uh, gorilla that's loading the machine gun for the human army. And, mm -hmm. and you, when I saw that in the trailer, I was like, whoa, yeah. God, that's, yeah. who are these guys? They start the movie out, and I, and I won't spoil it, but, but, the, but they go into why some apes defected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and joined the human army and what they're dealing with and and you see why caesar is the leader now mm -hmm. do you get into uh like as far as like the mythology like this is one of the things that i always kind of wondered about like in the original uh movie the first one dawn dawn's the first one right rise uh, rise rise right yeah. rise, rise is the first yeah. one and uh basically it's an experimental serum that creates these super intelligent um, apes and AZ one thirteen. AZ one thirteen. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I should be sitting over here, man. <laughs> Which and, you uh, will send you a vial of at the ten dollar <laughs> level of the Patreon. And, and like, but then every every movie progressively, even because I haven't seen this one yet, uh, as far as like the trailer goes, more and more and more and more and more apes are becoming hyper intelligent. Like, is it explained? Like, are they all getting the drug, or is this a natural evolution? Like what is that? Does that ever get explained in this one? It's. I feel like they don't go into. There just sort of is this assumption made that we created this. This. What is it? AZ one thirty one. One thirteen. One thirteen. Sorry. One thirty one's a different one. One thirty one's the other one. Makes your hair yeah. grow back. Right. Um, <laughs> it's like a Propecia. Yeah. Um, but but they just sort of that that sort of assumption is just made from the basis of the first trilogy and just seeing the apes evolve you're just realizing oh yeah, that that they're just evolving yeah right. it may have spread it with the virus as right. well you know as, as it's killing off humans it's also making apes stronger, oh, okay. stronger and smart. more because okay. in the orangutan talks too i'm like wait a minute it's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. why aren't the horses talking yeah. <laughs> yes. well there's something in that i've Maybe want to save for the spoiler up. Okay, uh, when, the, when the orangutan talks. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah. I mean, there's there's some there's some interesting stuff in there, and, and they some just mice that talk. The, the, well, no, the, that's Cinderella. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the horses like now yeah. the monkeys are riding us. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, where does it oh, end? God. Yeah. <laughs> How can we have evolved? We just <laughs> yeah. There's a it's like four hundred pound gorilla on the horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's <I'm> a, buckling. <laughs> 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 
Well, the thing, and they call it, I mean, this has been referred to in the other ones, is, is that they call it, the, the humans call it the simian flu. Mm -hmm. And this is the, this is the flu that, that is wiping out humans. And there's an interesting aspect of this in this movie. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like if you liked these first two films, you, if you, you got to see this one. Yeah, right. Like you're, and it's, you're it's, already in. You're already board, in. Yeah. It's well worth it. I, mm -hmm. I think it, and it's interesting because there's an interview um, in uh, that Matt, uh, Andy Serkis was in MTV. It's it's at the top here, um, where he was asked about the setting for the upcoming third film and revealed that the third film may not be the conclusion to the franchise. Hmm. He stated, it's very, very early and where we choose to drop anchor in the next film. It could be five years after the event. It could be the night after the events of where we left Dawn. So it's very difficult to know where the story is going right at this moment because it's being written as we speak. Now, that was obviously a while ago. But they, yeah, we'll get into it in the spoiler, but I wouldn't be surprised if they figured out a way to do more of these because... Right. Mm -hmm. They're uh, so good. They're, they're so good. good. And they're <laughs> successful, too. They're successful. They're doing well. They're, 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 um, We're not on the fifth or sixth one, like Pirates or Transformers. Yeah. And like, where they're just trying to imitate their first one. Like, the right, first right. one is, like, that's a great example. The first mm -hmm. Pirates inspired, mm -hmm. I loved it. I thought it was mm -hmm. like a masterpiece. And every other one, for me, has just been totally unwatchable. Like, yeah. they just run out of you're, pixie You're dust. absolutely right. Yeah, where they just a, carbon copied everything. The, the first one was kind of like a fun, interesting uh, popcorn movie yeah. based on a ride and had Johnny Depp doing something weird that we had never seen before. Yeah. And then everything else after that, I'm like, oh, well, this is unwatchable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like an SNL character or sketch that the first sketch was yeah. awesome Great and then they just keep churning it out Great over and over. Like, no, we're going to keep doing it. But yeah. well, we don't like it. No, I don't care. I don't care. We're going to keep doing Until it. Until it stops making money. Put yes. that catchphrase on a t-shirt. I don't yeah. give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, all right. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend seeing this movie. And as I said, we'll probably do, uh, next week we'll do a War of the Planet of the Apes spoiler up. Yes, so. with uh, Matt Weinhold. Oh. A Planet of the Apes expert. He's going to have an opinion or two. <laughs> he will. Indeed. <laughs> I tried first, kid.